Uh, it'll never be a rifle that is going to do everything perfectly. It is a battle rifle. So, I mean, guys are buying these. They want the 18-inch barrel, which is fine. It neuters it. You know, you lose feet per second and stuff like that. But do you really need to take off that? You know, you really need to take off that. I mean, if you did put a, a foregrip on this thing, you know, this plus a foregrip would probably... I mean, look at this. I mean, what do you mean you can't steer that? You know, I'm not even using the strap. I won't even use that. I mean, you know. When I do some of my um, shooting, I'm sorry that I'm swinging around like a madman here. But again, as we see, I just got the... It's it's a it's a safe it's a cleared rifle but it's just a you know a ten and a half pounds you know this idea that you can't respond with it the only thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a scope mount up here put a red dot on it and maybe a flashlight under here that's it and maybe a bayonet on there you know that ten and a half pounds of spear that's gonna that's a hell of a spear. This would be a nasty club, especially with that little butt plate. You know what I mean? You could almost do trench warfare with this. Kind of like in World War I. Hmm. All weather stock. That works. You know, again, both quarters. You know, you see, one, two, three. That's about all the recoil I'm going to get with a 145, is like. Especially if it's sitting in the pocket where it's supposed to. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I mean, uh, you got to get aggressive with it. Training, 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 training. Effective round. Uh, more training with an effective round is more training with an effective round. More training with a lighter round is more training with a lighter round. So, I guess in closing I could say, the biggest problem you're going to have with this rifle is the fact that it's made in China. That's the biggest issue you're going to have with it. Are there duds? Are there some things about them that uh, are, you know, yes, they had bolt issues on the earlier uh, Polytech uh, Noranko M14s. Polytech and Noranko apparently are built in the same factory, but they're not the same gun, but everything's so mass produced in China, and they have a, like a city that's just dedicated to manufacturing, and that's where these things are made, so... Uh, but it's all made in one country. Uh, it's got a parkerized, again, parkerized for weatherproofing. I mean, again, I haven't cleaned this thing in 509 rounds. Uh, I haven't oiled it. I haven't done anything. It could be smoother, you know. Uh, sure, it could be a little bit nicer, but at four, under 500 bucks, I mean, it's pretty, you know, you take another 500 bucks and upgrade it. I mean, you can get pistol grips and all kinds of stuff for these things, all kinds of stocks for these. You, you, you can change this thing. You can put muzzle brakes on it. You can put... Uh, different assortment of sights, all kinds of rails. Uh, they're not as easy to get the accessories, but you can get them. But I would say, problem is, is most people buy this and they try to turn it into a carbine. Uh, the nice thing is, is that, again, at 10 and a half pounds, you put a 110 grain bullet in here, I mean, tre uh, reload in here, I mean, it's virtually recoilless. You want your AR-15 type of response time, there you go. But do you need that light? You know what I mean? Like, if you can go heavier, you go as heavy as you can handle, you know? Um... You could drop a moose with this thing. Well played shot, you know. 308's a very, very hefty round. Uh, 308, uh, 180 grain, a little bit. I wouldn't shoot anything really above the 168. Um, although they don't recommend above anything above 147 grain for metal jacket. But I think that's just for liability reasons. Uh, other nice thing about this rifle, it was designed to have as few moving parts as possible uh, to increase reliability. The sights I'm going to cover on another day because I'm going on pretty long on these videos. So, uh, But yes, I give it a thumbs up. Buy one if you can get over the fact that it comes from China. Uh, I mean, the Springfield, the, the receiver is made in Quebec. The barrel's made in the States. Uh, the stock, I think, is made in Singapore. The magazines are made in probably Mexico. I don't know. Um, you know, NAFTA does weird things to manufacturing processes. Uh, is the Springfield that much better? What I've heard is, because uh, I've never seen a Springfield up close, in, but they're smoother, they're lighter, they're actually lighter. Uh, which lighter is better because then you can actually add stuff to it. That's the problem with these suckers. If you want to take this and turn it into a designated marksman's rifle, you're talking about 14 to 16 pound rifle. I've already weighed it with the scope and the mount and the bipod. And I didn't even have my chin rest. So you can have anywhere from like a 14 pound to 18 pound rifle. That's, you know. But you can get a quick detach bipod for it. Uh, you know, you look around. There's an M14 bipod. There, there's lots of stuff you can get for this. Box magazines. Hugely reliable. Um, very, I've never had any real feeding mag magazine problems with the, uh, 
you know, with the uh, feeding problems with the magazines. Um, user error, yeah. Again, 509 rounds, uh, four jams, and three feed, mal uh, feed malfunctions. Almost all of them were user error. One was uh, misfire. The other one was uh, the scope, uh, the scope uh, mount being in too far. Chrome line barrel, accurate. What kind of accuracy? Well, <laughs> I'll give you my worst accuracy first. The work ac accuracy I got at 100 yards with this is 16 mo8. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. Yeah, don't click off it yet because when I did my reloads, um. The best accuracy I got was about under an inch, or just a little over an inch and a quarter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a pretty darn accurate rifle. This is one of the things that's so great about these rifles is they're known for their accuracy. Um, there's almost no other rifle in uh, semi-automatic rifle in 308 that kind of matches it for accuracy. Uh, very few will in this price range. You know what I mean? In this price range, especially here in Canada, there's just no 308 semi-automatic rifles this cheap in 308 uh, with all the features that this has. Um, next thing is, uh, average, I would say with a 150 grainer, probably about a 3 MOA is probably what I was averaging. Uh, I'll have to, you know, do more paper and stuff like that. Uh, offhand shooting, I'm able myself to hit targets out to about 400 yards. Uh, 16 by 12, uh, is the, what I was shooting at. Once I figured out where I was hitting, I was hitting it at that. Now I know a little more about the rifle. Just a quick one on the sights before I go. Uh, when you start, you're probably going to start somewhere around 12 clicks up out of your 72 clicks. And that should put you at about 100 yards, giving a 147 grain uh, uh, 7.62 by 51 full metal jacket. should give you around that. Uh, plus or minus your rifle mileage might vary, but that's usually where people start, so about 12 clicks. To get out to 300 yards, you go another two clicks. To get out to 500 yards, you go about another six clicks, and you should be roughly. Uh, that said, there's only one way to really find out, and you got to go out there, there and do it. Uh, the windage elevation, again, I probably won't do it today because I'm getting kind of hungry, and I've been out in the, doing the greenhouse and uh, doing all kinds of stuff today, but I wanted to get out while it was sunny out and do the, the full review of this fantastic rifle. Uh, again, if you're a Canadian, I know there's a lot of... You know, the CZ858 uh, with the 762 by 39 is a lot cheaper to shoot. Uh, but you wouldn't regret getting one of these. And the idea that it, it takes a little more getting used to, uh, you know, because it is heavier, sure. But, I mean, it's kind of one of those things, once your muscle memory gets used to the bigger rifle, the recoil isn't really that much to tame. Uh, again, you're not going to mad minute with 168 grain. But, you know, you know. Uh, the, the way, uh, yes, to close up, the bolt, the ro rotating bolt, uh, it spins back like this. If you see some of my videos, you'll notice it, it does a little bit of a to the right, but not like, say, an SKS, which I find really pulls to the right and pulls high. And with the piston on the bottom, it actually, you get more of a, you know, this is probably one of the quicker rifles to get back onto target with, because the piston being on the bottom helps to keep the muzzle rise down, and with the rotating bolt, it helps to put it back at your shoulder. So... With the 180 grains, you'll start off and you'll be like this, boom, 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 because <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, with the 150s, you'll be boom, 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 and with the 110s, you'll be boom, boom, boom. Uh, that's what I got. So anyway, if you have any questions, hopefully I've answered everything. I will do a field uh, strip of this rifle in another video on another day. But 509 rounds, everything I'm going to do is maybe clean the chamber. I don't even think I'm going to bother cleaning the barrel. I'll clean the gas piston. That's it. Uh, and then I'll shoot out the rest. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's a great rifle uh, for the money. Um, I enjoyed it. That said, the next round might explode in the chamber. But I know one guy put a posting that, oh yeah, after 500 rounds, this thing will be shooting, you know, won't be able to hit the broad side of the barn. Uh, 500 and some odd rounds. Well, about an inch and a quarter grouping. <laughs> you know, at 100 yards. At 100 yards, uh, yeah. You know, even even if you have a two ma two moa or three moa rifle dude, for five hundred bucks. All right. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I hope these videos upload because uh, I've kind of ran them a little bit too long. Uh, it'll never be a rifle that it is going to do everything perfectly. It is a battle rifle. So, I mean, guys are buying these. They want the eighteen inch barrel, which is fine. It neuters it. You know, you lose feet per second and stuff like that. But do you really need to take off that? You know, you really need to take off that. I mean, if you did put a, a foregrip on this thing, you know, this plus a foregrip would probably 
I mean, look at this. I mean, what do you mean you can't steer that? You know, I'm not even using the strap. I won't even use that. I mean, you know, when I do some of my um, shooting, I'm sorry that I'm swinging around like a madman here, but again, as we see, I just got the, you know, it's it's a, it's a safe, it's a cleared rifle, but it's just a, you know, a ten and a half pounds, you know, this idea that you can't respond with it. The only thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a scope mount up here, put a red dot on it, and maybe a flashlight under here. That's it. And maybe a bayonet on there. You know that. Ten and a half pounds of spear? That's gonna that's a hell of a spear. This would be a nasty club, especially with that metal butt plate. You know what I mean? You could almost do trench warfare 